A lot of people have trouble getting their knee to bend after a total knee replacement. If you're having trouble getting knee flexion, we're going to show you several exercise options and the key things you should know to get it with the least amount of pain and effort. Hey, it's Glenn here from Mehab, the world's leading physical therapy alternative, where we educate and empower you to take control of your recovery. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button, and all the links mentioned in the video can be found in the description below. As always, this information is meant for education and demonstration purposes only. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Once again, before we get into the best exercises, there are several important pieces of information that you should know that can significantly improve your recovery. If you've not watched our video about the myths and misconceptions of stretching, or a video on why you should stop getting cranked on by your therapist, make sure you check those out, I've linked them below. As mentioned in our knee straightening video, it is important to know that you had full knee flexion or bend on the operating table. Your surgeon takes your knee through full range of motion in both directions to make sure that the prosthesis is working correctly. This is really important to know because it shows that it is not tight tissue that is limiting the motion. If it was tight tissue limiting motion, you would not be able to achieve full range of motion on the operating table, even though you have nice new knee joint surfaces. You quote unquote lose range of motion once the inflammatory process has had a chance to really ramp up. This causes swelling resulting in increased pain and tissue sensitivity. Those things are the reason you do not have full range of motion and why it's vital to control, reduce and prevent additional swelling. Decreasing the swelling will help significantly with the range of motion and pain levels. This is why we also do not recommend therapists cranking on total knees. Alright, let's get into the exercises. So what is the best exercise for getting your knee to bend? Well, the answer is the one exercise that you will do consistently. Generally, it is the one that is the most convenient and requires the least amount of effort. There is no additional benefit or magic in doing an exercise that is a pain, literally or figuratively. The following exercise options are simple and don't take a lot of effort. You can try them all and choose which one you like the most. They will do the same thing with regard to your range of motion. Option 1. Sit in a chair with your foot on a towel if you have hardwood floors or on a plastic bag if you have carpet. Using your other leg, either hook your heel on front of your ankle or the end of your foot. Gently pull back with your heel to bend your knee. Perform a short but strong stretch for a second or two. Think pressure on, pressure off. Option 2. Sit as far back in a chair as you can while allowing your foot to still be flat on the floor. Keep your foot on the floor, but scoot yourself forward in the chair to produce a stretch in the knee. Hold for a second or two. Again, think pressure on, pressure off, return back to your starting position. Option 3. Sitting on a bed or a table, either place your foot inside a pillowcase or wear a sock to help the heel slide. Additionally, you could place a board under the foot to make it slide easier. Wrap a strap, sheet or towel around your foot. Gently pull on the strap, allowing your knee to bend. Again, pressure on, pressure off. These should be repeated as many times as you can. The key is to perform them frequently and consistently throughout the day. Generally, people should aim for 2-5 to five sets of 10 every hour or two and progressively increase as symptoms permit. As mentioned in the other video, doing exercises this way is the best because 1. It provides short, moderate stimulus to highly irritable tissue, which makes it much less likely to increase inflammation. Prolonged or high force loads are much more likely to overload the healing tissue, resulting in damage and therefore increasing inflammation, swelling and pain. Number 2. It's much more tolerable for you. Often people will hold stretches for 30 to 60 seconds or do a low, low prolonged stretch such as the heel proper prone hang. As most can attest to, this quickly becomes torturous. Even normal tissue can become painful if placed on stretch for too long. Performing a brief hold, pressure on, pressure off, will stimulate the changes that we need without the high pain levels. It is much easier to tolerate knowing that the increase in pain is only for a second and you get a break. Number 3. You are in control. No one knows what you're feeling except you. How can someone dictate what you can tolerate? Being forced to endure your knee being stretched is ridiculous. It creates massive anxiety and fear for absolutely no benefit. Number 4. The real progress is made at home by you. 
Despite what people believe, it is your ability to stay consistent with your home exercises that ultimately determine your recovery. Having your knee stretched, as I hope you learned in our other videos, does not increase your range of motion. It does not lengthen the tissue. The range of motion gains are primarily due to improved tolerance to discomfort of tensile stresses and tolerance to a stimulus comes from repeated exposure. Pick the exercise that you like best so you have no problem doing it repetitively throughout your day. Your tissue is healing and has poor tolerance to stress. The main focus of the first week should be controlling and decreasing swelling. Any range of motion exercises should be very light, intermittent and under your control. Thanks for watching and please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll catch you on the next one.